Hi, welcome to this basic tutorial on how to set up CGFX shaders in Maya. This is for the purpose of having real-time visualization of normal maps inside of Maya. Uh, this is not to be confused with Maya's viewport 2, which is capable of the same thing. Uh, this is a great way of testing shaders programmers have written for the specifics of uh, art creation in Maya. Okay, before I start, you probably need to get your hands on a couple of files in order to continue. I'm sourcing some files from the internet <clears throat> and I'm sourcing a couple of images. Uh, one is a diffuse and normal map sourced from Corey Ryan Sponsella, which I have downloaded and modified in Photoshop. Uh, basically, so I can save it at one file at a time. What you need to do is create two files, one for the diffuse.png and one for the normal.png. Another file I've sourced is <clears throat> from Lyakov, I've sourced a CGFX shader, this IC Uber shader 2.7.cgfx file. Okay, so when you have downloaded those files, first we need to do is set up a project. So a new project, and this one I'm going to call uh, CGFX setup maya. And using defaults, and I'm going to browse for my projects directory, which I always use. F drive, media, 3D projects, okay. and accept. <clears throat> Alright, so here's my ice uber shader I downloaded, which I'm going to put into my new project I just created, and I'm going to put that in the uh, render data shaders directory. Okay, and then I'm also going to source my images I saved that, which is wall diffuse and normal, and copy them also into the same directory into the source images directory this time. Okay, so I'm basically set up, ready to go. So in this example, I'm just going to create a classic polyplane using some very straightforward position, 000 world coordinates, and I'll just put 15 by 15 and width and height and switch on shader mode. I'll just go ahead and switch off the grid. I'm not really interested in seeing that at this stage. So next stage is to open up the hyper shader window, rendering editors, hyper shade. Okay. Now by default the CGFX shader is created through the hyper shade. If you look now you probably cannot find it. That's because it is not switched on to load when Maya runs. So you need to go to window setting preferences down to the plugin manager and you'll notice that the fourth one in the list is the cgfx shader.mll so load and auto load so it loads the next time you run so close that and if you've done it correctly we will now have a cgfx shader available to select so go ahead and select that All right so at this stage this is the big pink shader uh, let's middle mouse drag it onto our plane and of course it's a green shader. Don't worry about it at the moment, we just don't have anything loaded into it. So double click your CGFX shader and what we first thing we need to do is actually load in this shader we downloaded uh, so Maya knows what to do. So let's open up the folder and since we put it in the correct position we can see our shader right there. Let's just load that in. Let's pull back down so I can see more. Okay, so there's a quite a lot of things in here that might be confusing for some people who are not familiar with um, these kinds of render nodes or shaders. Just ignore most of it because we're only going to look at a couple that are of importance to us. One in particular we're going to look at is loading in a diffuse map sampler. Now this is to point at the diffuse texture for this example. So I'm going to click on the checker box select file, select the open dialog <clears throat> and here is my wall diffuse.png and open. Okay, nothing much is happening at this stage. It's basically need to switch it on. So switching it on actually is just above it where it says use a diffuse texture. Click the checkbox and we should almost be able to see our texture. Just switch on textured mode. 
and there we go, we can see it. All right, so going down through the list, the next one we want to look for is a normal map sampler, which is just here. And hit the checker box and load in a file, open and browse for wherever the normal map is. And this is what a normal map looks like. Hit open. Okay, so it's loaded in, but we also have to tell it to use it. Okay, you can immediately see some result in the viewport that makes it look like something is happening. So that's actually getting pretty good at this stage. So let's just close the hypershader. And to really get things flying, we need to create a light. So create lights and select the directional light. And there we go. So just leave it as is. So now we have a directional light in our scene. We need to connect it with the shader. So selecting the poly plane here, you'll see in the attribute editor, CGFX shader is available still to select. So this time we need to go all the way down near the bottom and you'll start to see light one, light two, directional lights coming up. So one we're interested in is the first slot, light one, dash directional light. And right clicking, lights, directional light. So we load that in. I'm just gonna go full screen for this example. So it's control space if you don't know. Select it, go to rotate, and if we're lucky, we should see the results of this real time shader. So that's basically it. So <clears throat> be aware though that when you do load in different shaders, so if you didn't use this CGFX shader in particular, that the options under the attribute editor will be significantly different. Okay, so this is just specific to this CGFX shader. So essentially, once the light is connected up and you rotate it, you can see the effect of this in real time. So this is basically the CG, CGFX shader telling the GPU what to do with the lighting information stored within the normal map. Okay, so that's the basic, basic tutorial on how to set up real time shaders using CGFX shaders. Thank you.